Yes, people, welcome back to Albert JTV. Match review time. Arsenal nil, Manchester City won. But before we get into it, let's hit the intro. <music> Yes, people, welcome back. Welcome back to Albert JTV match review time. First of all, guys, smash the like button straight away. Hit the notification bell for my content comes out. I will also put this out on my IGTV letter for my Instagram community. So, yeah, boys, let's get into it. Um, where do we start? So, Arsenal lose at home to Manchester City in the Premier League. Um, a result that probably a lot of people saw coming. They probably just didn't know what the scoreline was going to be. Um, if I look away from the screen, I'm looking at some notes because, mind you, you know what? I'm talking about notes, but I don't think there's too much to write down. <laughs> I didn't put a lot down during the game, to be honest, because it's not going to be a long review, but here we go. Um, so let's start with the team lineup, wise. Before I get that, sorry, if you've got me on my Instagram and my Twitter, it's above the overlay, above my head. It's also going along the bottom of the screen as well. So follow me on my social medias, on my YouTube journey. That's out of the way. Right, game now. So starting lineup. Um, I don't get to how can I put it? I don't get to sort of worked up or overthink it in, in terms of what Mikel Arteta is gonna pick because to be honest with you, I gave up probably about three, four months ago. Um, because he always throws in the curveballs. I keep saying on my content, but it's true. So you never know really who he's gonna pick in terms of the first eleven, if we're being honest. Um, but I said overall that uh, there will be four changes from the game against Benfica. There was actually five. Um, we played the 4-2-3-1 formation. Um, I think the only thing I probably got right in terms of a, a potential team lineup in my head was the centre-back pairing of Rob Holding and Pablo Mari. Um, but the game went how I thought it would go. Um, the only difference was, as I, as I said on a couple of fan cams with over and over again, big up to him. Go and check him out. And Guna TV Media, Ross, my guys, go and check them out. I was on the fan cams with them. And um, I said, the only thing that um, surprised me was that Man City didn't have to get out a second or third gear. Because the game, sort of, Gary Neville said it in the commentary. He said, this is a brutal start from City, even before the goal. And remember, the goal was on, what, within two minutes? Um and then you know what? There's two, there's the way I look at the goal, for example, right? Anybody that's seen my content, for example, in regards to particular players at Arsenal, whether I think they're good enough to be in the team or even in the squad. Um, Rob Holding is probably thinking, I'm in a good position. He's he's had a look before the cross has come, he's had a look, he can see that Sterling's there. He's probably thinking I'm in a good position. If the ball goes over my head or goes past me, my right back, i.e. Hector Bellerin, is going to cover me. As you can see, it didn't happen. You're letting a guy who's five foot seven, who hasn't got, as far as I'm aware of Raheem Sterling, the best ability in the world to head a ball. You let him score a header with a guy at five foot seven, about seven, eight yards out from the box, unmarked. It's not acceptable. Good ball in by Mares, don't get me wrong, but it's not acceptable. Um, so yeah, City go one new up within two minutes. So we're already on the back foot. Um, they control possession as I thought they would. Um, there was a point, I think, of about in 25 minutes in, City was 70% possession. You've got to remember, we're the home team. I get it, City are a very, very good side. Don't get me wrong, I don't downplay that. But when you're on the home side and the opposition has got 70, 70, 70 plus percent possession, that's not a good look. We didn't get any foothold in that first half whatsoever. And we're playing a formation, guys, in a 4 2 3 1, where we've got players in within a system to allow us to be a bit more fluid. But the thing is, if if the other team in City are going to have more possession of the ball, when you do get hold of the ball, 
you've got to do better with it. And, you know, we're going to come on to Aubameyang a tiny little bit later, but um, I, I wasn't impressed with what I saw today in terms of uh, forward play. You can talk about how good City are and what is it? They've conceded only four goals in 18 games. Um, I think that's in all competitions. Um, you know, coming into the game against Arsenal, 17 games in all competitions, wins in a row. That's in, in, incredible form, I get that. But like I said, when you have the ball, when you're in possession of the ball, you've got to try and make things happen and for the ball to stick better and to create opportunities. The only opportunities I saw was with um, Kieran Tierney. Who had a, you know, Riyad Mahrez is a tricky customer for any left back in the Premier League or any full back in the Premier League. So Tierney's had about three games out, I believe, through injury. Come back, come back in baptism, baptism of fire, as you could say. Um, had a tough, tough, tough start to the game in the first half. But him, Tierney and Bukayo Saka were the only positives in that first half who were progressive and tried to get us up the pitch, um, tried to give us something offensively. But other than that, we didn't get behind City at all. Odegaard found it difficult to find the pockets of space. And to be honest, he wasn't getting the ball. And the reason why he wasn't getting the ball is because City had a lot more possession. And even when we did have it, we didn't find him. Um, so not much to say about the, the um, first half. We was a bit better towards the last 10 minutes of the first half. We got a little bit of a foothold, but that was literally was a little bit. Um, we come into the second half. I thought... It was a pretty is is a, it was a more even contest. Um, I thought both teams were a little bit sloppy, but like I said, a Man City did not have to get out a second or third gear. I have to make that point. They didn't. You know, even the times they got the ball, they looked dangerous. Man, Cancelo um, really should have buried a chance to make it to put the game to bed and make it two nil. But um, yeah, I thought that it was a bit sloppy, but. Like I said, City didn't have to get out of second or third gear. Um, one thing I have to come on to is two things for a wrap up. The subs again for me was an issue. Um, so I would have took a Bamyang off and put Lacazette on. And even if you're going to take Pepe off, even though he wasn't fantastic, even if you're going to take him off, you put on Martinelli. Um, I wouldn't have brought on Lacazette to then keep Aubameyang on. That, to me, didn't make any sense. I thought Aubameyang was awful today, to be honest with you. I didn't think he was great. You might say the whole team wasn't great, but what I'm looking at, I'm talking about in isolation of, of, of a forward player who, you know, besides the Benfica game, is coming into the game off a hat-trick. You know, you don't score a hat-trick if you're off form. Like, I've never heard that before in my life, but his performance was poor. I think Alex Scott summed up Aubameyang's performance in the studio. She summed it up perfectly. He's bang average, and he was. Um, I heard people say he should have been taken off at halftime. I mean, his performances this season, to be fair, have not been great. He's fallen off a cliff. Um, we know about the personal issues outside of football, but like I said, again, he scored a hat-trick in the last Premier League game. And he could have scored four. He should have scored a hat-trick against Benfica. So he's been given... He's been, He's been given, the, he's been getting the chances, but today's performance was a lot to be desired for. Um, again, the subs. So Arteta, to me, again, he's not proactive enough. Um, it's not that it was the wrong subs. I just think, well, there was a the wrong subs. I thought, in person, he should have bought on Lacazette for for um, Aubameyang. That's what I thought. Um, guys, drop in the comments down below what your thoughts were in terms of Mikel Arteta's sometimes questionable substitutions. Um, yeah, with Aubameyang, Again, touched on it very, very quickly. I don't want to go on too much about it, but this guy's form is worrying. Um, his body language is a bit worrying. We knew about the personal issues, which I understand, but as I mentioned before twice, really, and I mentioned it again, this guy's coming off the back of a hat trick. He should have been coming into his Man City game with two hat tricks in a row. Um, but today, that, that performance for a forward player was non-existent. And I think I'm being pretty polite by saying non-existent because I could have been a lot stronger in my words, but I'll leave the Twitter brigade to get on with that man in Instagram crowd. They're, 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 they're quite passionate as it is already, as you guys will know, being on social media. But yeah, um, you know, just to wrap up, City, we knew it was going to be a tough game. Um, it doesn't help when you go down 1-0 after two minutes to a headed goal from Raheem Sterling. 
couldn't write a script like that. But City, like I said, um, what is it? Have scored, conceded four goals in 18 games now. Um, our last four Premier League games against Manchester City, we haven't scored a goal. I mean, the possession stats for the game today, let's have a look, guys. Um, Arsenal, 45% possession. That's not a surprise playing against City, but when you get the ball, what do you do with it? That's the main thing I would probably say. Um, now, it says one shot on target, and I had to ask a couple of guys on, on, the, on the fan cams that I went on who actually took the shot, because I couldn't remember, because I don't remember us having a shot at goal. But apparently it's Kieran Tierney. But yeah, not much to write home about. Um, pretty even apart from shots and possessions, which are the two most important things. But shots on target, yeah, not great. When you're at home, I think we've lost three games out of four now. Is that right in the Premier League? Again, drop in the comments down below. It, it just shows, and I've said this time and time again before, before I wrap up. Teams in the Premier League are dropping points left, right and centre. But we're not good enough to capitalise. And that's the issue. Um, our best route of Europe is through the Europa League. And I think that's a very slim chance. Uh, we go into that second leg on Thursday. You know, not putting ourselves, putting ourselves in quite a tricky predicament. Um, what I don't understand, going back to sort of the substitutions and the personnel in terms of Mikel Arteta, what, what he's doing in terms of picking these 11s. Is he saving Lacazette and Martinelli for the Europa League? Because he can't be, because they're not playing. Um, he's some of his decisions in terms of personal are, are, again are very questionable. You know, Martinelli, we understand he's had a big injury, but what he can't get 10 minutes against Aston Villa, he can't get more than 20 minutes against Benfica away. He doesn't get any minutes against Leeds, he doesn't get any minutes today. It's 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 baffling. Arsenal fans, tell me. Tell me. Drop in the comments down below. What is going on in terms of why Lacazette's not playing or why Martinelli's not playing? I, I don't understand it. And you're favouring a guy in Aubameyang. Yes, he's the captain. But to me, if you're not playing well, you shouldn't be in the team. He's coming off a hat-trick. But that performance there as a centre-forward was not acceptable for me. I'm sorry. That may sound harsh. But like I said, go on Twitter and Instagram world. There's a lot more Arsenal fans that would be a lot more harsh than me tonight, trust me. But, um, guys, a defeat to um, Man City, no shock. Um, a juggernaut of a team defensively and offensively. Like I said, they didn't have to get out of second or third gear. Guys, drop in the comments down below who you thought Arsenal's best player was. I was going to give it to Kieran Tierney because I don't think there was much choice. Saka tried hard again. You know, because he's been out for quite a long time, Tierney. To come back and, to me, in my opinion, be our best player speaks volumes about this, this, this squad, this team, but guy, drop in the comments down below, um, smash the like button, like I said, um, but guys, before you go, and if you don't know what to do by now, this is what you should do. And there you have it. Love that bit. But guys, thank you for being loyal to my Instagram crowd who recently subscribed to my channel. Massive shout out to you. Thank you for the support. Keep continuing to support. Enjoy the content. Spread the word about my channel. Twitter crowd, you know the drill. You've been doing your bits as well. Arsenal family and the rest of it, football community. That is me, Albert JTV, over and out. Hashtag Arsenal nil. Manchester City won. We move to Benfica.